Mangrove. Mangrove is the first part of a 2020 TV series called Small Axe, directed by Steve McQueen. It tells the true story of the Mangrove Nine, a group of activists in Notting Hill in 1970 who led a march against the police harassment of them and their restaurant, the, the Mangrove restaurant, which was a sort of central cultural hub for the black community at that time. The march became a riot quite quickly, thanks to many different uh, antagonists, and they were all put on trial for riot and affray. So, I have a strange affinity for this sort of time and period in British history and TV and there's, there's so many different things I've watched and loved from that period as featured here. So I'm really looking forward to stepping into that world again and stepping into it with a, a master filmmaker like Steve McQueen. So if, if anyone who hasn't been following the, the career of Steve McQueen, he's been making consistently for several years now. Since Hunger, his incredible debut, he's, making, he's been making incredibly raw, psychologically complex and political films. And this is no different. So he introduces us to this sort of warm, welcoming atmosphere of the mangrove with the music and the sights and the flavours and stuff. And then we go into a sort of wider view of Notting Hill at that time. So this is only this is 1970. So it's only six years after the conservative, the infamous conservative slogan, "If you want an N word for a neighbour, vote Labour." You know, you might think that was six years earlier, but the MP, the MP who won that election afterwards stated, I would not condemn any man who said that. I regard it as a manifestation of popular feeling. And, and then, oh, knock, knock. There's another reference there to Enoch Powell's, Enoch Powell's infamous Rivers of Blood speech, which was only two years before, so... So yeah, race relations didn't seem to be improving at this time and judging by a lot of Twitter feeds, <laughs> referencing knock, knock knock we want Enoch, I don't know if they've improved that much now. So we get this fantastic world building setting up the sort of context for the rest of the story and then we meet these characters, they're all, they're all introduced with their own personal problems at a time and they very quickly become political problems. Some were very, very quickly driven into this sort of anger and passion that we're going to expect from the rest of the film with some very intense acting. You gonna try and arrest me for that, or what? Look at, look at me here. I can't believe that's him from Human Traffic. Sean Parks, he's, Sean Parks, he's a beast in this. Absolute beast. And then we've got a, a more subdued, but equally as powerful performance from Letitia, Tisha Wright. And then Malachi Kirby as Marcus Dow, who's somewhere in between. He's, he's, he's more of a thinker, but he's also has a burning passion that explodes at times. There's a lot of very, very intense things going on, internal and external. There's a lot, there's, there's these characters are very complex. Every actor in this brought their air game and they're all allowed to live and breathe and shine on screen. Even Morrissey turns up and, and, and Smiggy from Lava. It's always good to see him back again. Oh, look. The door. And the score's tremendous as well. It's very subtle, but there's just a certain... There's sort of a, a few little breathers in here where the score really comes to the front, and it just gives you some time to take in everything, because there's so much... There's, there's quite a lot going on here in terms of... I'm going to get into it in a second, but this, it's good that there are these little breathers that... Where this music really swells and gives you gives you something sort of, just gives you a bit of breathing space. And I was really surprised to see that the score was by Michael Le Levy, because uh, the the only other mute score I'd seen by her was Under the Skin, which is really really in your face and I, I mean that as a compliment, but it's it's there sort of underneath the whole time, just adding this tension to it. I thought that was brilliant. This is urgent. What's your name? I like the use of colour as well. Like like I said in the opening scene, when you see the mangrove, it's a very it's a very warm, welcoming place. And then when we go outside, it's it's much colder. And yeah, the interesting thing about it is though that the the sort of the the mangrove restaurant is is a sort of that that is the sort of black culture there, and the, the other is well the establishment culture, and then both of the both of those places are steeped in tradition and built from tradition. It's just one is there to unite, and one isn't. And that's what's interesting about it, and that's also one of the themes in it. The left mirror. Step to one side. God save the Queen. I mean the Mangrove of Nine, they're accused of a, they're accused of stirring division and then they're not allowed into the court. Like why would any citizen of this country not have access to the legal system? Who's it there for? 
this cunt. My courtroom. My courtroom, your lordship. Yeah, I get that he's sat there with his silly wig on and he wants to give the impression that he had the, the legal system has power and it's serious, but that is the problem with politics and, and the legal system in this country, is that it's all just about giving an impression of something. It's not about actually doing it. It's not about... It's not, it's not even like... It's not a service or a utility. It's just... A, it's. A, an art. It's an art form. It's just that it has to give the impression of something. Like you have to wear a stupid wig. It doesn't. It doesn't matter how effective that is or who it actually serves. It just has to give the impression that it does something, and it has to look like it's doing something. Like this daft twat in the wig. And it's like all these people who are watching Brexit turn to shit, and they're just like, "Oh no, it's, it, it'll be great because we won the World Cup once." Stop talking the country down when it's being shit. We we won the war. No, nostalgia cannot fix problems. I do not regard these circumstances so exceptional that I should give my reason. My lord! And then there's all this legal jargon that they use in there that's just it's just designed to bamboozle. Because only only those people can understand it. So how how can anyone who's going in there without that training understand what's going on there? Like, th there's no access there. That That's just breeding division. That's what Darren McGarvey talks about in this clip. What, what you might see is... What you might uh, see is passion someone sees as aggression or pushiness mm, mm. or what you might see as polite someone thinks is patronising yeah. and it's it's the combination of all of these little instances where people come away from an attempt to mingle across the ravine that, that just becomes natural to sort of recoil back to where it's comfortable but then they'll separate them like that but then they won't treat the defendants and the cop the cop is the same like this guy's allowed to say this but this person isn't allowed to say this so why and but then they're accusing they're accusing the defendants of so in division. But then they can't stand it when someone big turns up who's intelligent enough to play them at their own game. This reminded me of um, Wild Wild Country, the Netflix series, when um, that cult, the cult, a cult buys um, some land in America, and the the locals are all hanging around on the on the perimeter of it, taking pot shots at them with rifles. So the cult goes off and builds a shooting range and buys a load of weapons, and then the locals all lock themselves in a house and say, "What are we going to do? It's not fair. They've got weapons." What? It is peace. No trouble, it's a restaurant! I love this sort of argument at the beginning as well because I've talked about this before. Where um, there's, there's, a, there's an argument about keeping a community and the political separate in the mangrove and just letting the mangrove be somewhere. Like like I'm saying, because that community thing is, is something that any, everyone can access and that can be something that will unite them. As soon as politics gets involved, it's someone else's game and you'll never win. It's just a waste of time, and it, all it will do is cause people to fight in in fight, cause more division, because it, you know the ladder's been pulled up already, so you can't get anywhere with that. But the community stuff is accessible to everyone, like I said. So I love that it had that argument, but then it went on to, well, because it's a true story, it went into the other stuff as well, and there's some hope at the end as well. At the end of the film, there is some hope in fighting the system. It's just, you know, you can if if you if you. It's just the community stuff is more direct. You don't have to ask someone permission to do that. I feel the same about what I'm doing now. Like I'm streaming directly to an audience. Like, and I put my films on here direct to an audience because I don't see the point in giving money to a film festival or a film industry that only wants to hear certain things. It doesn't want to hear what I've got to say. I shouldn't have to pay someone for the permission to give it to an audience when I can talk directly to an audience like I'm doing now. Same problems. So. And faithfully to return your verdict. Anyway, Mangrove is, is a complex film. It's too complex for me to cover every aspect of in here because my mind's just falling apart right now. So all these high-level ideas like Dave Rubin. <laughs> anyway, act, acting cinema, just everything in it works brilliantly. Maybe it's a little too heavy-handed, but it's just, it works. It works and it's a true story and it's powerful. It's brilliantly acted. Again, Matey from Human Traffic. I just... When he, when he came on at first, I thought, who's this guy? I've never seen him. He's, he's new. He's going to go far. I didn't realise he'd been around for 30 years. <laughs> anyway. But anyway, yes, Steve McQueen. Top-notch filmmaker. Brilliant programme. Um, it's available on BBC iPlayer. Now, um, part two's on next Sunday if you want to watch that as well. I don't know if I'll have time to review that. Hopefully I do. But anyway, um, you can subscribe if you want, if you liked it, if you liked this video. Um, and I'll be back next week. No, no, I'll be back Thursday. Got another reviews on Realism on Thursday. Blue Collar. Check that out. Been a busy boy. Um, bye.